Hi, in this video I will demonstrate how to use Pixel Artist Action for Photoshop. Let's start taking a look at some previews. So this is the starting image and these are some results that can be achieved with different pixel densities. Next, some variations with some effects applied. Here color maps and color maps with Dieter. Let's move on also with the other examples. And the last one. Now let's start with the installation of the action. Open Photoshop, go to menu window, then select actions. The action panel will open. On the action panel, click the arrow icon on the top right corner. When the drop down menu opens, select load action. Select the action pixel artist from your hard disk and click OK. Now, before playing the action, there are a few things to check. Open an image to work with in Photoshop. Make sure your image is in RGB 8 color mode and you can check it from the top menu image mode. Then go to image image size. The action was tested on images between 150 and 5000 pixels. The higher the resolution, the heavier will be the final size and management of the PSD. Also, the action will generate 25 different pixeled images and it is calibrated to work better with a resolution of 72 pixels per inch. If your image is 150 or 300 ppi, it will work anyway without any issues, but it will give a larger number of useful results with the 150 image. You can modify resolution, width and height from this panel and change these three parameters if needed. Then make sure also that the layer of the image is locked and is set as background. To set a layer as background, go to menu layers, new, background from layer. Instead, if you're using an image with transparency, just open the image and rename it background manually, like this. Now make sure to have a clean file with only the layer background. Then open the action panel again, select the action pixel artist and click play. The duration of the playback depends on your machine and the resolution of the image. On average, it's less than 2 minutes. I will skip this part, so see you in a moment. Ok, the playback is finished and this message has appeared. Click continue to close it. Uh, at the beginning there will be many opened groups in the layer style and it will look messy. To make a quick reorganization, hold Alt on your keyboard or Option on Mac and click the arrow of the main group Pixel Artist Output. This will close the group. Then release Alt from your keyboard and if you open the group again normally all the layers and groups will be reorganized. Now let's take a look at the layer structure. Inside the pixel artist output group there are different subgroups that can be recognized by the different color code. Post effects, pixel effects, color maps and pixel base. Hide each subgroup starting from the top to see what each one does. The source layer is a filler layer and is used as a base and doesn't need to be touched. 
In the next section, we'll see some operations that can be done to all the layers and groups generated by the action. This way, the rest of the guide will be quicker. Few layers have to be edited in a particular way and this will be covered later. Okay, so the first basic method is editing the masks. All the layers and groups are provided off a mask channel. You can mute and unmute the mask channel by shift clicking on it on the layers panel or also invert it using Ctrl I or Command I. Use the brush tool to hide or reveal parts of a layer. To do it, select the mask channel of the layer you want to edit from the layers panel, select the brush tool, then a white or black color and paint over the image. A black brush will hide the painted parts of, the, of a layer, while a white brush will reveal parts of the layer. The second method is changing blending modes and opacity, which is very basic but very important. You can modify the blend, blending mode and opacity of all layers and groups in the layers panel or by double clicking the layer in the layer styles panel. Experiment with them, try, try to understand the best solution for each layer to make your image great. If a layer by default has an additive blending mode such as screen, try also the other additive blending mode. While if it's set to a subtractive blending mode such as multiply, try how it works also with the other subtractive modes. The next method is the use of the blend if parameter and this option is used only for the layer's highlights and shadows. It basically gives the possibility to filter a a layer based on shadows, midtones or highlights. You can see that this parameter is active if the layer has a double square icon on its right. To use it, double click the thumbnail of a layer or group to open the layer styles panel. You'll find it at the bottom of the main tab. Only the slider this layer is used in this preset. Every pixel that has a value inside the range of the two markers will be visible while the rest will be cut. The last basic method is simply duplication. You can duplicate a layer by pressing Ctrl J or Command J on your keyboard. And now we will make a more detailed description of each subgroup starting from the bottom. Okay, the first subgroup is pixel base, which is the main group of the preset and let's see the layers inside of it. The first one is PX base. This is the main layer and it, it is a smart object. The first thing to do before the customization is to, is to open this smart object by double clicking its thumbnail. Inside there are 25 different layers, numbered from 2 to 70. Each layer refers to a different resolution in pixel, pixels per inch. By default only the layer 10 is visible. Unhide them one by one and choose the one that fits the best with, for what you want to achieve. Going downward, the images will be less detailed and the pixels bigger, while going upward, they'll be more detailed but still pixely. Once chosen the best layer, close the smart object and save it. Next, we have Posterizer. This adjustment layer will make a posterized effect. To use it, unhide it and double click its thumbnail to modify the parameters. Using the slider, you can filter a certain number of colors. This layer can be moved from this starting position to any other position to achieve slightly different effects. Try experimenting with it. The blending mode of this layer is set to luminosity by default. Try also color and experiment with other modes. Use the opacity of the layer if needed to tune down a bit its effect. Next we have shadows and highlights. These two layers are used to add a controllable secondary level of shadows and highlights. They are both a clone of PXBase. This means that any changes made to inside of PXBase will be reflected to these two layers. This way, they will have the same pixel resolution that was selected in the PXBase and the pixel of this, all of these layers will match. Use the blend if parameter as said before to filter parts of the layers that works nicely with your image. You can also duplicate one of these layers and choose a different range in the copied one to have a further level of detail. Then we have Restore Details. This layer is a copy and not a clone of PXBase. It's a copy with the same internal structure of the base but the images are more crispy and detailed. It can be used to reveal some nice details 
that were too compressed and lost during the operations on PX base. For example, eyes, outlines, thin details like hairs and many other things. Hide and unhide the mask using shift click on it to have a quick look to the whole layer. First thing to do is to open the smart object and select the same resolution layer used in the base. Check if it has better or more interesting parts of the image that could be shown. Check also the other layers and choose one. Close and save the smart object then. Then select the mask channel, select a small slightly soft brush with a white color and paint over the areas that you want to reveal. Use the opacity if needed to tune it down. Then we have the yellow group color maps. Inside this group there are 10 color maps that will, that will add an 8-bit effect to the image. Unhide them one by one to see each one and double click their thumbnail to open their properties. From this panel it is possible to invert the gradient that is making the coloring effect by clicking the reverse option. Also you can double click on the gradient to customize its colors. It's possible to mix two or more color maps by using the mask channels or the opacity parameters. Next group, the orange one, is pixel effects. And in this group, there are three layers that will make the image pop up better and will add also a detail effect. First, we have PX Sharpen. And this is a clone of PX Base 2 and it will sharpen the base image. It uses a high pass smart filter. You can modify the radius of the filter by double clicking if, it, if needed, but the default one works very well in many cases. Use the opacity to decide the strength of the effect. By default the blending mode is set to linear light. Check also the other blending modes of the same group. Next we have PX Sub -con Contrast. This layer is a clone of PX Base 2 and will add some contrast and saturation in some areas of the image. It's different from PX Sharpen, but it works the same way. You can modify the Smart Filter, Opacity and Blending Mode. Next we have the Deter layer. It has the same internal structure of PX Base, but the images were processed in a different way. Open the Smart Object. If you select the same resolution used in the base, the pixels of the layers will match. But with the Deter, you can achieve some nice effects by unmatching the pixels and selecting a resolution that is for example the, the double of the resolution of the base or any other resolution of this. Use the opacity to tune it and try also the other blending modes in the group of soft light. This layer has a smart filter that is hidden by default. It's another high pass filter. You can unhide it and use its parameter to have a slightly different detail effect that doesn't affect too much the brightness of the image. Okay, the last subgroup is post effects and you can use these layers to fine tune and balance the image. Try experimenting also here with the blending modes and opacity parameter. By double clicking the thumbnails of this layer, you can modify, for example, the levels and hue saturation here, and also the color of tint and vignetting. And this is all for this tutorial. Thank you for the attention.